Hello and welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast. I'm Brent Reid, joined by Fatima Kutu, Pam Riley. Uh, big weekend of footy. Mm. Ladies, we should start with you, you Fatima, because you had a big weekend. You, uh, you're up there in Darwin. I was in with Darwin. Parramatta. I was in for, Darwin. For one of the great cataclysmic second halves of rugby league we've seen in recent times. Yeah, it was, um, it was atrocious <laughs> by, by Parramatta. I just, you, I have shell shocked I think was the way to describe it watching that game because if you at half time it looked like the team that was about to get blown off the park was the Dolphins yeah. you looked at them they were on their haunches hands on hips they were done the Dolphins they were spent and it, looked, it felt like Parramatta were on top but um, I don't know what happened in the sheds at half time because Parramatta came out looking like a completely different team uh, the Dolphins put them to the sword scoring a try Every three minutes, um, I was in the team hotel after this game, getting ready to get on a shuttle bus to go back to the airport. And the mood in that team hotel was absolutely um, dire. You know, mm. it felt like it, a funeral. Heads were down. Nobody was in the mood to talk. Um, and I guess Brett Arthur summed it up in the post match. Right? He said that the team gave up, and worse still, that you know they're a part time footy team. It's hard to remember a Parramatta side. I mean, they were bad against Canberra a couple of weeks ago, but it's hard to remember a Par- Parramatta side capitulating like they did in that second half. It was yeah. disgusting, really. Well, that's the thing. And to say they're a part-time footy team, they're getting paid very handsome full-time wages. I don't yeah. think that's yeah. anywhere near acceptable. Like, that would... Imagine hearing that from your coach or even yeah. from your... Like, that's embarrassing. Yeah. And b- people are pointing to Mitch Moses being out. Um, but for me, that's that's probably... Uh, that's a that's a, a soft excuse. I mean, the Dolphins had seven players out in mm. this game. Yeah, yeah. I wondered whether or not Mitch. Uh, I just thought that was aside from obviously Mitch is a great player, but it's just the worst thing that could happen to a team like Para, who kind of have this. It's kind of a soft mentality that they have, and it, yeah. it's given them a, an excuse. Now they can go, oh, you know, Mitch is out, and. Yeah. Therefore, we're not we're not at our best. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, this was disgraceful. Yeah. But how like how long are they keep going going taking games up here to Darwin? They've <laughs> lost their last three up here to Queensland teams as well. It's it's not a good. <laughs> no, yeah. no, the record's I, horrible up there. Horrible, yeah. horrible. Yeah. Well, the record, you know what? The record's horrible in the past. Forget Darwin. The record in the past three weeks has yeah. has been pretty. Old. I know they've won one in there and squeezed yeah. a win in there, but yeah. they've had a couple of really really poor losses. They have had a couple of poor losses, um, and they and have the focus has now come on Brad Arthur, right? Well, because it's interesting what he said in the, in the post match, right? Like, I, I, part of me wondered whether he was doing it to, so publicly so he can el- elicit a response from the side, but at the same time, it exposes him a little bit because then he's opened the door for fans to say, "Well, hold on." You've had this team all the preseason because they missed the finals. Um, they're playing really poor football sometimes, quite inconsistent. If they're a part-time footy team, how much of that responsibility now falls mm. on him? So I thought I think I thought it was a bit ballsy of him. I think he was do it, doing it to elicit a response, but it was a ballsy way to do it. Having said that, I did hear from talking to people that he went absolutely nuclear at them in the sheds. Yeah, so so what, the, the, yeah. what we saw in the post-match was nothing compared to what they got in the shed so and even Gutho said you know this week is a week of you know looking each other in the eye and hard truths and all those honesty sessions we we hear about all the time yeah. so I don't know where they go to from here because like you said Mitch is still out for a few more weeks they face Manly Broncos and the Storm yeah, off the tough, top of my head tough run, yeah. so by the time Mitch comes back because they're not going to have Mitch for those games yeah. by the time Mitch comes back there's a good chance that that season is already gone yeah and, you know, and what I found, found interesting about that, because I spoke to Bryce Cartwright as soon as we got to Darwin um, and asked about Brad Arthur. And he got his back up a little bit and was like, oh, you know, it pisses me off to to hear all the criticism about Brad Arthur and whether we, you know, and I can say categorically that no one in this team wants to be coached by anybody else other than Brad Arthur. Well, I'm sorry, you didn't play like it on the weekend. Yeah. Like if you if you want to be coached by no one other than Brad Arthur, then you don't you don't dish up what they did in that second half. I don't think there's been criticism of Brad Arthur. I think that's a bit unfair to say that because people are the people who's and I'm one of them who said maybe the times come for Brad to move on. It's mm. not because he's not a good coach. Mm. You know, it's not because he's not a great bloke, because yeah. he's a great bloke yeah. and he's a really good coach. Yeah. The issue is he's been there for 11, 11 years, I think this mm. is his eleventh mm. season. He's made one grand final. 
Um, and does the time come where um, you, the players need to change, the club needs to change? I think that's the question people are asking themselves now. Uh, at least, I don't think that club is, because I think that club's a really stable club mm. and it's a really stable board and they, they don't make knee-jerk reactions. They're very thoughtful, very considered about what they do. Yeah. Um, and when they do decide, if they decide they need a change, they'll go through the front door with yeah. Brad, they're the sort of club that'll go ringing people behind his back, because yeah. that's not the way they operate. Yeah, but and he's I, earned the right to have yes. that front door conversation, you know, but and I'm not criticising Brad at all, no. I'm criticising the players. No, I'm, I'm saying, saying the, yeah, people, the, 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 you know, yeah. Bryce, for example, to suggest um, people are criticising Brad, if that's yeah. You know, yeah. the line he was going down. I mean, people, pe no one, I don't think anyone's criticised Brad, they've yeah. just said, the team's not playing well, Yeah. Mm. does the time come to to make a change yeah. You know, yeah. after 11 years when you've yeah. only made one grand final you haven't won a comp yeah um you know you do wonder like if there's th there's got to reach a peak i think and you know people have said that this is not a new concept but it it, it comes a point where hearing the same voice it, it runs out of they run out of ways to kind of agitate you to get yeah. best out of it's you, you know what of I mean? wayne bennett and craig bellamy Correct. right I mean, yeah yeah that, to, that's yeah. what that shows yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah that someone like craig bellamy can stay in a job for 20 plus years yeah. and still be getting but yeah. Craig, he's a once in a generation that's a, type that's of guy that's dying a dozen yeah. right you, know, yeah. you don't find yeah. many blokes like that so I mean that's the issue I reckon Parramatta's got to grapple with now particularly if results keep going like they are mm. if they lose the next three and their games they conceivable, conceivably could lose all three yep. that puts them at what are they three and four uh, are they two and five I can't remember I think they're three and four that you know losing the next three you're three and seven Mm. Your season's, yeah, ba three and four. Your season's yep. basically over. Yeah. You know, you, you've pro you're probably, you know, if you don't make a decision soon enough, you're probably not in the mix for Wayne Bennett because mm. South's are knocking on Wayne's door by the sounds of it. Yeah. So, you know, th I guess that that's the, but the, but they, they are a very, uh, I wouldn't say slow moving club, but they don't, mm. Mm. they're just a considered club. Yeah. They don't do things, they're not rash decision makers of that footy club. So, be interesting to see how it unfolds. Yeah, well, I don't think they need to, you know, it wasn't that long ago that Brad Arthur took them to a grand final. Yeah. And there has been talk about, you know, sometimes Brad Arthur is a little bit hamstrung in the recruitment process and the rest of it. But regardless, like in the time that he's been there, he has been able to build a roster that has been able to get them deep into a final mm -hmm. series. And he does have the players that should be capable uh, of doing that. So I don't think the club are in a position to rush a decision. If anything, they're probably going to wait to see if they do make the finals or not rather yeah. than midway through the season make what would be quite a disruptive move to say you know we're done with Brad Arthur and, and all the way through like I think Pam did the story where their CEO Jim you know came out and, mm. and defended against claims that they're looking at Wayne Bennett um, Buzz had Sean McKelder in, in the paper today again saying that they're backing him so the club is publicly backing him so um, I'm not sure anything in that point of, from from that standpoint is going to change anytime yeah. soon um, we should talk quickly on the Dolphins because they were outstanding mm. I saw like Katoa so young, everyone talks about the game lacking young halves mm. I mean he is what 19 yeah just signed yeah. a contract yeah. extension there and he's a bargain absolute bargain yeah I mean you're so right we talk about there's such a lack of young halves this is just one who's just come through and just kind of gone bang and you can see why he was so hesitant to kind of wait for his spot at <laughs> Penrith as well. It just probably wasn't going to come yeah. for him. Um, you know, potentially next year, during yeah. Luai I think leaving. But wow, he's just had such a big impact up there. Yeah, he has. And what I um, in that game in particular, what yeah. I liked about it was early on when it looked like Parramatta were on top and it was going to be a blowout score the other way. Um, he kicked, he kicked out on the full, and then there was a tackle. I can't remember who it was on, but it was a blatant one on one miss. And then I thought, oh is Katoa in for a tough night here, but he sort of brushed aside those sort of two errors and he was just, he made, you know, Dylan Brown and um, Dejan Arce look mm. like mm. part-time footballers. It's like an as old Brad head had. on the young shoulders, which you, yeah. want, which yeah. you want from half, yeah. right? Yeah, he, he, like, he ran the ball, he probed the line, he kicked well, he got them into the right places in that second half and... We controlled yeah, the game. He did, he controlled you the know, game. Which is what Paramount lack at the moment with mm. Mitch out, someone to just come in and control the football game. Yep. And some of the other, like Maxi Plath, yep. scored a double. Unbelievable. So they've just got some guys who are sort of unsung... Footballers. I mean, they had no Farmworth, no um, Flegler. Yep. Um, Hamaso. 
No hammer. Yeah, yep. they had a lot of players out in this game. Yep. So I think they had seven. And then Trey yeah. Ford comes in and has oh, a bl- blinder. Insane, He's yeah. not even in the top 30. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, good on them. No Wayne Bennett, of course. He, yeah. didn't, he didn't make the trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what, just not to, not to harp on about Parramatta, but I think they were guilty of thinking, man, not even their coach is here. So this yeah. is going to be yeah. a piss take when, you know, they, uh, they took the Dolphins a bit too lightly. Um, so, yeah, good on them. It, they... Yeah, they just blasted the eels um, off the park. And I actually think it might have been a pro Dolphins crowd. Yeah, it did sound that way yeah. on the coverage, actually. Yeah, yeah. It I don't like know how much of that I push, considering that it's supposed to be eels territory. But mm. um, there was definitely a, a louder cheer for when the Dolphins ran out than what Parramatta did. Right. Yeah, wow. Mm. Well, let's look at uh, Sunday Arvo game. Canterbury Knights. There was a bit of action in this one. Yeah. It was on the sideline for this one. It was a bit yeah. of fun. But um, there's been some fallout from it, some big fallout. Um, so obviously was, there was the tunnel clash between Jack Hetherington and Reed Marnie. They both yeah. got sin bin. Uh, Jack's gone off first, um, gone into the dressing room. Wait. Reed Marnie's <laughs> then got 10 minutes as yeah. well. As he's made his way up the tunnel, Jack's confronted him. They've had a bit of a shove, or Jack yeah. shoved him. And Jack Hetherington's been charged with contrary conduct this morning. He's facing a one-match ban over that incident. Yeah. The other big news out of that game is Carlin Ponga. Yeah. Um, he's had scans on a foot injury. Uh, the, the Knights, the worst fear is that he's out the rest of the year. Mm. He might need surgery. The Knights are hopeful that won't be the case. So, first of all, we should talk about this. Can you? Okay, so... The two we, spiky sort of guys, <laughs> yeah, these two guys. I know, yeah, they the don't back down. just a pest. Can, Can you, you tell us what it's like on the sideline? You hear this has happened in the tunnel. What, what's well, you know, happening? Because you kind of get... You, you get a bit excited. You're did like, you see what it? is going on? No, I, did, I actually... You know what? We got Reed Marnie on Triple M and yeah. we interviewed him. Yeah. And someone was trying to tell me before the interview, mate, just ask him about what happened in the tunnel. And, and I didn't actually find out till after the interview. So we finished the interview and then, and then found out this had happened. Um, Get ready here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shaping yeah. up. <laughs> Shadow boss. But they're too, like, Jackson... He's like, this is what I should have done. Yeah. He's like, I should have followed again. him down the tunnel because, you know, Jack's a very volatile guy, mm. right? I mean, Jack Heather, they say he's a cracking bloke, but he has, like, got that white line fever. And Reed's just... Reed Barney's pretty volatile in the footy field. He's these just days a pest. Too. I mean, yeah. you wave yeah. him off the field yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, do, do we, are we satisfied with a, a one-game ban for that, for Jack Hetherington? Um, he was the instigator. He was the instigator, and I know we're laughing about it, because when you see the footage, especially with that footage of Reed Marnie kind of replaying it in his yeah, hands, yeah, yeah. sort of shadow boxing, it's comical, but at the same time, it's not. Like, it's, yeah. a, it's pretty poor behaviour. It's behavior not funny. By, it's funny, but it's, it's not. not it's exactly, not funny. by Jack Hetherington. <laughs> also, where were the Newcastle Knights staff in all of this? Because when, when Hetherington's being held back, and he is being held back, yeah. so... You can tell that the two Canterbury officials sort of going strong to hold him back. So I know the Knights tried to say, "Oh, Hetherington was playing, playing a bit of a prank," but it didn't look like he yeah. was he was joking. So um, and to leave the sheds yeah. to go find well, him. Apparently, he saw him on the. He was watching the game on the television. The yeah. sheds saw Reed Marty got sin bin as well, and yeah. then walked out the sheds. Walked and, out. Yeah. yeah. See, that to me is not okay. Yeah. You know, was he in there by himself then? I, no, I, I, there must have been someone in there with him because there's always Surely. someone that goes in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it might have been just one person, right? And Jack's yeah. a pretty big dude, right? If yeah, Jack well, like wants I said, to I mean, it, I'd the... move out of the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, f- fair enough, one week, but yeah. I would be happy if you got a couple more. That sort of behaviour is just completely uncalled for. Yeah. I mean, like you, you, you're already off of foul play, right? Yeah. Well, I think they were off because they were. They had a bit of a scuffle and then mm. they were going at each so other verbally. Off, but and I think he just you know, wanted to calm but, yeah, the referee wanted to, to calm the situation. What I mean down. is already off the field yeah. for doing the wrong thing or yeah. being insolent to the referee or whatever it is, to yeah. you then go compound it by yeah. you know, wanting to <laughs> fight. What a stupid the like it's just stupid though. Yeah, yeah. It's silly. It's so stupid. Yeah. Your team is already totally under the pump and yeah. then you wanna square up to someone in the sheds and get a week. Like yeah. what that's just yeah. yeah, yeah. The other big news is obviously KP. Yeah. Um, look, he, he hurt the foot in the first half, came, came back because he had a hip hip pointer problem. Mm. Um, and everyone thought it was the hip pointer. Mm. He actually uh, hurt his foot in the first half, uh, ca- came out the start of the second half, and he was a passenger. He basically couldn't run. Mm. Um, and they pulled him off and he uh, took him off, sorry. And he's got to have scans. <laughs> That's the old Callum Potter. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then, um, they've. Uh, uh, he's got to have scans today, but look, I mean, they're, they're optimistic. It's a, it's a, it's not too bad. But the fear is it's a 
he Long might time. need surgery and that could be the rest of his season. So um, you can see him here, he just absolutely struggled, Kalen. So why did he play if he was not 100%? Why did they bring him back? Well, yeah. I think I think he tried to push through it. Mm, yeah. And they were under the pump, they were losing. Um, and I think they just thought, well, sent him out and said, yeah. let's see how you go early in the second half. And obviously it backfired on them. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that's a risky take, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. How do they go without him? Terribly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well who, who are the options? We were like we were talking this morning. Yeah. Um, who, They've got a really good young on? kid named Fletcher Sharp, who they got really high hopes for, but he's injured at the moment. Uh, I think there's a kid. Is named he injured? I think uh, Adam O'Brien said he's sort of coming back from injury. So yeah, but I don't think he'd be right for this yeah, week. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, the, the, I think Adam said there's a kid named David Armstrong. Oh, that's it. Yeah, David he's Armstrong. the fullback in New yeah. South Wales. New South Wales Cup. They reckon he's been going all right. They Dane Gagor is the other one that they look said look look potentially. Mm. Gagor didn't play this game because he had a calf problem, but he should be back this week, and they yeah. could play Dane Gagor at fullback. Yeah. But yeah, you know, there's also a view that. Um, Gagos played really well at centre this year and mm. if you move him then you're almost mm. weakening one position to strength another so my gut feel is at the moment it'd probably be David Armstrong I think it'd be Fletcher Sharp if he was fit yeah because they brought but the thing is is they they brought Will Price over yeah. as a fullback as well so are they just committed to him playing at 5'8 now because he's been playing 5'8 in New South Wales yeah Park. he's the young Englishman yeah um, he's, and they've had he's really got some talent yeah but I think they're worried defensively. I think he gets caught out occasionally. Now, mm. probably be less of an issue at fullback, right? Because he doesn't have to. Yeah. You've got to organise the defensive line. Yeah. From I was just going to say, I, <laughs> I know um, Gagai's been playing really well at centre, but he is one of the best defensive centres yeah. in the competition. So defensively, from from that point of view, he wouldn't be um, d wouldn't be the worst option, depending <laughs> on you know what Adam O'Brien wants to do. But I'm with Pam. Like they're a bit like Parramatta, right? Like without Mitchell Moses, they the Parramatta mm. struggle and without KP the Knights are probably going to struggle too yeah so it could be um could be a, yeah, long a long season for them already yeah terrible what yeah. about the Bulldogs though they were God, out, well that, that's, that's awesome. the sort of performance that's yeah. been coming right I mean yeah. they look better every week um and they just put it all together yesterday yeah yeah no, that's, yeah they did it's just awesome uh you love to see it just with the with the players that they have it's you don't They've got some obviously superstars in that team, but then overall, like we were talking at the, you know, in the preseason, like what, what their pack is terrible. Yeah. You know, they've got no forwards or this or that, and they just come out and, and do that. Yeah. I think they've been playing really well. Well, that's the thing. Like you hit the nail on the head, Pam. It's it's their star players in their side are playing like star players. Totally. You know, Kickers in some great form. Um, I reckon Mad just probably called Fox because he's like just killing it last couple of games mm -hmm. matt burden's even you know really improved in, yeah. in the last month you know defensively mm -hmm. he's been going well um attack on the other side of the ball he sort of looks like he's a bit more comfortable in that role um at, at, did i mention kick out yeah like yeah. All, all, all they all their, <laughs> the players that you would expect the most from yeah. are delivering at the moment and i think that's helping them quite a bit um and they've just got this i think we're finally seeing Ciro came under a bit of pressure last year because I think yep. people expected this sort of improvement almost immediately. Mm -hmm. But he's rebuilding, right? It was it was always going to take time. Yep. And in terms of their attitude in, in defence and just just the attitude as a whole as a footy team, I think whatever um, Ciro has been trying to instil there, the Bulldogs are finally showing that. Um, I wouldn't say you know they're a top eight contender. I, I reckon they might be now. If they can catch fire, if they if can catch fire, the I reckon they can. It's not exactly strong. I mean, if you look at the bottom of the eight, I'm going to call it up real quick. I, while I we're still feel about. like I still feel like it's the, the the teams that are the genuine top eight contenders will separate from the pack. You look at like the, the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, right at the moment. Mm. I wouldn't count the Broncos because the Broncos are six and they'll be there. Yeah, yeah. But Canberra's been a bit inconsistent. Yeah, you know, yeah. against the good. The Cowboys have been absolutely all over the shop. Yeah. Dragons have been a bit up and down. Warriors have been absolutely all over the shop. Roosters have been all over the shop. Yeah. I'll tell you who's really impressed me for the doggies. They, you're right. Their high paid players are playing really yeah. well. But um, I've been critical of their middles. Yeah. Max King yeah. has been yeah. unbelievable for them. And you know, he's playing with a broken hand. I saw him leave the uh, stadium yesterday. Mm. He had ice on his hand. He said basically it's a pain management issue for him at the moment. Um, you know, wow. When he initially did it, he, he struggled to grip. Mm. But he said now it's he's got a bit more freedom with the hand. But he's played through it and it's obviously in pain for him. Yeah. And Sam Hughes was great yesterday, yeah. the yeah. young kid. So yeah. the middles really aimed up for them. And when that happens, they've got good enough play, players around else. Yeah. They're going to 
cause you trouble. Absolutely. But they got a big game. The next game they got a bye this week. Yeah. Then they got they had eighteen thousand there yesterday. The game after they got the Tigers at a core stadium. Oh. That should get thirty thousand minimum. Yeah. Really, because yeah. you've got two two big yeah, Sydney clubs Sydney teams. who are sort of showing little signs yeah. that they're on the way back. Mm -hmm. I reckon that'll be a huge huge day out. That will be a huge yeah. day out. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, I tell you what, if they win that, the Dogs plus the bye. I reckon they're probably in the eight after that. Yeah, after yeah, that. Will they be the, in the eight at the end of well, the year? I don't, I don't know. I just think, I, I agree with, uh, when I look at them, I still think they're at least one elite yeah. forward. Yeah, I, I think a, a half for, too. Forward <laughs> from being a genuine like contender for the top eight. Yeah. But they're clearly, you know, like going into the season, if I was to say who I feel like is the most improved team at the moment, it's, for me, it's probably Canterbury. But there was no way I thought I would have said that at the start of the season. So No, same. So yeah. I think they're surpassing a lot of people's expectations. Do you give them hope, Pam? Top eight I do. Hope? Yeah, I actually do. Because yeah, I just think hope. that there's, there's so <laughs> many... <laughs> <laughs> doggies and their fans. Get no, up, let's get, get around them. <laughs> no, there's just Come too on, many doggies. teams, just as you were saying, just too inconsistent. There's not... No one's you know, overly convincing at the moment, yeah. aside from a, you know, handful of teams. So there's absolutely the opportunity there. Yeah, I think I think that I think they're smokies now. For, oh, the, for the bottom of the eight. I think they could finish anywhere from sixth to tenth. Okay. Maybe I reckon they'll probably finish seventh about to the eleventh. Seventh to eleventh. Yeah, oh okay. my god. Sixth to sixth okay. might have been a bit high. But seventh to eleventh, I think they can finish anywhere in there. Okay. That's a great season for them. Yeah. Okay. Great season. Um, yeah, I don't see it. I, I reckon I they reckon they finish actually picked anyone up for next year? Off the top of my head, I don't think they really have. Uh, not I for don't think 25. So. I'll tell you what they have got, though. Um, I saw Steve Turner at the game yesterday, the great Zappage, Zap yeah. Turner. Yeah. <laughs> He's coaching their SG ball team. Yeah. And I think it's their SG ball team. And they're, they're in the grand final uh, next week. Was it weekend. their SG ball team that's in the grand final? They beat the Roosters, who hadn't lost a game. Yeah. But they've got two mm, young halves they playing. They do. That young kid, Mitch Woods. Yeah. Who, he's the, he's who's, quite young, though, Mitch Woods. He's quite he? young. Yeah, he's probably a couple of years away, but yeah. they're saying he he's is. Yeah. And he's got a young kid named Alex Conti, who the Tigers okay. let go. He's yeah. got yeah. two tries at the weekend in that semi final. So, you know, it's it's, it's a bit of a juggling act, right? Because mm. you don't want to mm. block those kids coming through. Because that Mitch Woods, they've got huge hopes for him. Yeah, he I mean, they do on Alex as well. Yeah. So fair. they're in a difficult position, right? Because they could go and buy a half. But then you're blocking that path for those young kids. So, mm. but Mitch Woods is still 16. I think he's still 17. in high school. He's young. Is he? So oh, he's I feel, I feel like maybe he's, he might be 17. I he might be 18. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. He's a teenager. <laughs> yeah. He's, 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 he's coming through though. And there's yeah. some real promise yeah. there. So, mm. um, you know, that, it's, there's a lot, lot to like about the dogs at the moment. Yeah, we'll give them a hard is. time, but there's a lot to like about them. I'm not giving them a hard time. Yeah, you should ease up. I'll give them a hard time, but I'm jumping on the time. bandwagon. Yeah, I have. Uh, good on, I've bad Gus, but good on you, Gus. You're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> That'll mean a lot to Don't them. listen yeah. to Buzz. You're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're one of the, they're, they're, the Canterbury are to me what the Tigers are to you. Yeah. They have a tiny little soft spot for them. Not that yeah. necessarily you support them or anything, no. but they're the kind of club that you want to see well. And yep. Zero is the kind of coach that you want to see yeah. mm -hmm. do well as well. So, look, they're definitely on the up. I just think they're probably missing <laughs> one or two um, key players to make them that genuine top eight contender. Let's talk about a couple of other teams you like to see doing well. Yep. Or at least I do, because I'm a Broncos man from way uh, back. Yeah. What about them? They were <laughs> unbelievable on Saturday night. They are no Reynolds, no Haas, I know. Yep. Uh, no Mariner. Yep, uh, and they just tore the the Raiders yeah. a new one. And this yeah. bloke, Reese Walsh, oh. oh my god, he is an out and out superstar, superstar, absolute superstar. Well, this is the kind of performance that you'd want to see from them, right? If they were going to grand finalists last year, this <laughs> you know you see so many teams who make that grand final and next year they just kind of drop off. But this is yeah, this is the kind of performance that you want to see when you are missing some star players yep. that they're some of the you know unheralded guys and the younger guys can step in and really do that job. Your Raiders? My Raiders. No, Jam and J the big, big news out of this game, if you're a Canberra fan, was Jamal Fogarty going down for mm. a ruptured bicep. Sorry to interrupt. I've oh. just found out Mitchell Woods, as confirmed by Canterbury, is 17. 17, okay. okay. So he's a couple yeah, of years away yeah. at least, probably. <laughs> Sorry to digress. Yeah. I thought I knew, I knew that. He could play first grade next year, though. Yeah. yeah. If he's good enough. Well, we're oh, saying Gal Galvin's shown he's good exactly. enough. Um, yeah. Ethan Strange shown he's good enough. But anyway, when did he turn eighteen? Uh, I just have confirmation that he's oh, seventeen okay, this okay. year. So, um, but um, Jamal Fogarty, speaking that's of halves, massive. Yep. yeah, huge for them. That's massive. And and as good as um, Strange has been, it's going to be a huge responsibility to shoulder. With you know, we're all 
thinking that it's Kaya Weeks Kyle that Weeks, yeah. comes into that mm. side. Um, <laughs> it changes a lot for them. Like yeah. Jim, we've spoken a lot about how good Canberra's forwards have been, and they have been good. They've, they've helped them play uh, like a gritty power game, and you know all the outside backs and guys like Strange and Fogarty have been able to play off the back of that. But where Fogarty has been key is his game <laughs> management, right? Yeah. Um, and that's something that they're going to miss. Um, yeah, it's um, 12 weeks, I think it was. They were saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much, you know. I'm not going to say well, their season will either season, be over but or... Yeah, yeah. We'll know, I, I think we'll know in the next couple of weeks to see yeah. how, they, how, how they cope um, with that loss. I wonder what it means for their contract negotiations with Ethan, Ethan Sanders, Sanders, though. Well, I don't think they had any particular... They, look, they were happy to take Ethan Sanders, a young Parramatta half, mm. um, if he asked for release and Parramatta, Parramatta were willing to let him go. But I don't think they... They weren't re- really fussed either way, right? Because they mm. had Fogarty there. Um, and I think there's been talk about maybe going to the market to get an experienced half. I don't think mm. my understanding is Ricky doesn't really want to do that because then you just bring in a bloke for the rest of the year. A guy like mm. Sean O'Sullivan, the mm. Dolphins, who's not really getting a game mm. um, because I, I think Ricky would be worried about going and getting guys just coming for the rest of the year. Fogarty will come back eventually anyway, you would hope. Mm. Um, but Sanders, I think they, if, if Parramatta were willing to let Sanders go, I think they would now... Um, happily take him because yeah. um, I think we expect so that if, deal to be done at some point this this week. And if then Paramount have shown that they're probably not going to pick Sanders and mm. actually who knows what Brad Arthur does uh, this yeah. week because he did sort of seem to suggest that there might be some changes. Well there's an intriguing subplot with Sanders yeah. because if Paramount play him mm. in first grade mm. when he leaves um, and he, they lose the right to a $50,000 development fee. So if he doesn't play first grade at at Parramatta before he goes to Canberra, and he yep. plays first grade at Canberra. Yep. Canberra got to pay Parramatta fifty grand yep. in development fee. So if he plays first grade at Parramatta and then goes to Canberra, yeah. they don't have but to. But if pay they're it. not going to play mm. him, as I'm, uh, the point that I'm getting at, if, yeah. if Para aren't going to play him this year, then isn't it then to their benefit to, to let him go to yes. Canberra, who do need him, and then they do get the development fee? But I don't think can, the issue would be um, whether Parramatta say we want to play him in return mm. or we want money. I don't mm. think Cam- Canberra won't do that. Canberra will just say, if you want to let him go, we'll take him. Yeah, yeah. But we're not going to we're not going to pay you something for him because we have to pay fifty grand anyway. Yeah. And he's and mm. he's and he's coming to us next year, so I think that's you know. Yeah, I think Ricky will want to instill a bit of confidence though in Kyle Weeks too. Oh, for sure, yeah. absolutely. Right, and really yeah. back him. I think he's that kind of coach, and um, you know he's a good player. I think he was probably very close to getting that. He was. He Five was the guy yeah. in the first place. Strange. So, mm. you know, we'll see. We'll see what he's capable of. Yeah. yeah. You know, I felt really sorry for Chevy Stewart the other night. Um, How, he showed a bit of grit. Uh, yeah, he really I did. Really he dug like, in. I, I thought he it was, just, that was great. You know, talking about Katoa in, in the in the game up in Darwin, like nothing phased Chevy. You know, he yeah. just picked himself up and kept going. Yeah. He picked himself up and kept going. And there were a couple of times where you could sort of see his head going down a little bit, yeah. but he just brushed it off and kept going. And and Sticky said in the post match, you know. The, the team I have now is about building a team for the future. I don't know if that's a concession from the coach saying that you know it's probably they're probably not going to play finals this year. But you know we've seen guys like Weeks come through. Sanders will probably be in the mix next year. Strange, Chevy Stewart, guys like Tomoko. Yeah. You know yeah. he's building a team for the future. So you know he had a tough night, but he was brave. Definitely, so I don't think the see, Raiders think. It kind of embarrassed themselves at, at all. all. I think that was yeah. yeah. The Broncos just played really well and. Yeah. Let's have a quick look at the Sharks Cowboys game. Mm. I didn't see this. I was um, driving home from a core stadium, but I listened on the radio. Yeah. Cowboys sound like they were totally, they were absolutely abysmal in this game, and they have been. Well, they started the season so well, but. Well, everyone thought they were a grand final, uh, you know, a title contender to start yeah. the season, playing to their potential, <laughs> you know, star players, um, playing well, but all of a sudden they've just being really inconsistent, yeah. conceding a lot of points, which is something that Todd Payton teams, you know, that's not that's not his thing. That's probably what he'd be most disappointed with. Um, but yeah, they just had no answers for the Sharks. Yeah, Sharks are, Sharks are very good at home. Good they fans. are very good at home, yeah. But th- I feel like both of these teams are quite hard to get a handle on. They're mm. a little bit inconsistent, both of them. Mm. Are they not? Am I mad? Sharks, sharks are yeah. probably, Sharks have been a bit more, obviously a bit more consistent this year. Um, the thing with the Sharks is they're so well coached. They're such a well coached team. Yeah. And they just win the games they're supposed to win. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. issue they've had in the past is beating the really, really elite sides. But mm-hmm. I reckon the comp's a lot more. I don't, 
it feels like Penrith's come a little bit back to the pack. The, the um, comp's very strange at the moment. Yeah. Like you think back to the first couple of rounds, we were raving on about how the quality of football is amazing, yeah. and you know teams mm-hmm. have jumped out of the blocks. And all of a sudden now we're sort of getting that period that we normally get in the first four weeks now where you can't predict, like good luck trying to tip tip around or anything like that. So there's a lot of inconsistency. Um, there's been no real team that's I mean, stood out. Well, the Broncos, well, I wonder, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think that the Sharks are going under the radar a little bit here? I think, so. well, they are. They're top of the league. But I think, I don't know if people genuinely think they can necessarily win the comp. Okay, I mean, I'm just looking at the, the games that they have one yeah um not to take anything away from the fact they are at the top of the, but the competition <laughs> so <laughs> they've beaten they've beaten the warriors yeah um, they should have lost that game the warriors should have won that game yeah, yeah. they've beaten canterbury they've beaten the tigers they beat canberra and then they beat the rabbitos who have been terrible, terrible. Yeah. um and then cowboys have been sort of yeah. neither here or there what's their so, what's their upcoming draw like so they've got canberra Dragons, the Storm, and then the Roosters, and again the Roosters who have been yeah. quite up and down. So it's well, see, a softy stall. That, that was the yeah. knock on them last year, though, too, right? They didn't beat a top eight side, no. and they they really struggled in those against those bigger teams. Yeah. Um, and then potentially, you know, we don't really know yet. We don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I mean, the, even Melbourne are equal top. Yeah. They should have lost three of those games. Yeah. The, the other scrape through. Yeah. Um, so it just just doesn't feel to me like there's a standout team at the moment. I mean, Brisbane looked Brisbane really good on the look, weekend, yeah. and when they get Reynolds and Haas back, they're going to be a, a, mm-hmm. a different team. But I think Brisbane, like Brisbane and Penrith, for me, are the sides that continue to stand out this year. Yeah, and look yeah. most logical. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, I mean, it's it's been hard to get a gauge on what the Panthers are really like, yeah. considering Nathan Cleary's been out, but he should be back this week. Having yeah. said that, they could be without Dylan Edwards, who looked to suffer some sort of. Yes. hamstring type yeah. injury so that's one to um to chase today but um i think from and i don't know maybe because i watched them tear my team apart for me i know the sharks at the top of the table but it feels like if we're picking the favorite for a title right now it feels like the broncos to me yeah considering they've still got adam reynolds and Payne Haas to come into that side anyway it's only round seven let's uh let's finish <laughs> off a little new segment a little, little new segment we introduced in the monday podcast Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't got we haven't got a title for it though, do we? No. What what are you watching? What are you watching? Give us a show. Recommend a show for the listeners. What do you got? Um, well, I think I'm watching the same thing that Pam's watching. You yeah. can't the same show. You've got okay. a different show. All right, go. You go, Baby Reindeer. Okay, so, yeah, Baby Reindeer on Netflix. <laughs> so, have you yeah. heard of this? I've, I think I've seen it on Netflix. I think it's, it's like good. one of the number one shows on Netflix yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. We, My partner and I binged it the other day, uh, like series, two, two days. Yeah. yeah, I think it's about seven or eight episodes. Okay. It's extremely, it's very intense. It's not a casual... Okay. Viewing, so it's but it's very, very good. Popcorn and relax. Sort of, I mean, sort of you can't show. relax, but you can oh. sit down with some popcorn, <laughs> yeah. eat whatever you like. I've only, yeah, I haven't binged it all. I only got through like one and oh, almost two episodes, and I, but I was yeah. dialed in, like okay. almost instantly. I was like, okay, this is a little it's bit different. Baby, so reindeer. It's different baby reindeer. So, and it's about this comedian, oh, this English go. comedian, um, and this is a true. This is a true story this is That's what happened the thing to that him freaked me out about it this yeah. is actually a true so story it's about a stalker and a relationship that he he gets a he de- oh, has a stalker I did see the, I did and see they develop a really this. weird relationship sounds a bit and like misery it's kind of yeah misery? so yeah. it's it's similar but it's it's crazy so he wrote this um and obviously acts in it and it's his own true story oh, so really? he does an amazing job um of like his acting is incredible. It's really, mm. it's very, very That's good. That's an excellent start. What, what about you? What have you got? I don't know. I think we're going to take it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I almost don't want to admit this, yeah. but I'm watching a show called, um, because it's a very easy watch yes. called Walker. Walker? So Not it's, Texas Ranger. Yeah, it's an adaptation. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's, an, it's an adaptation oh, wow. of Walker, Texas Ranger. Really? It's a modern take on it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Look, There's no judgment here both, for TV shows. It's, it's I, I watch the most It's bad trash. and good at the same time. Okay. So that's sort of, um, and like I said, it's one, of those, it's one of those shows that you could sort of, and I actually was So this I was is the opposite it. of this one. You can oh, just yeah, tune is, out. Yeah. And I didn't actually realise it was an adaptation of Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah. It, Chuck it was like Morris, before, man. Chuck yeah. Morris, yeah. Nice. It was before my time. <laughs> and they kept making sort of these weird references. And I'm like, is this show an adaptation of that Chuck Norris? TV yeah. show from the 90s Turned out nice. it was yeah. yeah So it's a If you want to tune out and Yeah Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a very easy watch yeah. I um I started watching June You know the movie June Okay Yeah the sequel's yeah. just come out 
I've just started watching it. So I'm only like a half hour in, but it looks very good so far. Okay, you're enjoying it's it. It's always a two-hour movie. I was just going to say, is that one of those three-hour movies I got that distracted they distracted. Yeah, I haven't got back to it. My <laughs> yeah. worry is I bought it because it cost me $6 to hire it okay. on Netflix. Yeah. And you know, if you don't, you know, you've got 40, once you start watching yeah, it, I know. you've yeah. got like a 48 hours, hours or otherwise yeah. you oh, lose really? it. Yeah. So I need to like finish it tonight or I'll have to pay for it again. Is that why you oh want to start God. the podcast yeah, earlier? Yeah, I get so home and watch that. I watch June, yeah, yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us on the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast. We'll catch up with you next week.